welcome to the No More Late Fees podcast. I'm Danielle. And I'm Jackie. And we're just two best friends and ex-Blockbuster employees rewatching some of the best and worst movies from the late 90s and early 2000s. This week, we are talking about the 1997 classic biopic, Selena, with our friend Stephanie. <laughs> biopic. Welcome, Stephanie. What? Biopic. I never feel to say that one either. How cute. Be off okay. about <laughs> Oh, is this, I thought you just, okay, so this is different ways to say it? Okay, well, hold on. Are you asking her how to say it? Using the compound stress rule, the word is pronounced biopic, not biopic. But regular people don't know what that means. It just sounds like something you do with your eye. <laughs> Bioptic. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we just say biopic? Oh, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you say it your way that's fine it's a biopic or biopic <laughs> selena with our friend stephanie welcome stephanie welcome Hello. stephanie we've already started with the shenanigans <laughs> we had an argument on how to say that word <laughs> google says biopic which is how i say it but danielle said people won't know what i'm talking about so i, I said it both ways i say it like we say it on the streets <laughs> biopic <laughs> <laughs> If you haven't gotten to know Stephanie with our interview, pause, go back, listen. We talk about the songs from the Selena soundtrack, how we know Stephanie, and what makes her a Selena stan. But before we dive in, let's get into some housekeeping. Excellent job, ladies. <laughs> if you love the podcast and you want to support us, here's a free, here's a few ways you can. Did you know writing a review and or rating us helps us get more listeners? Just like this review. Let me bring the computer a little closer. Where's your glasses, Danielle? They fell behind the couch a week ago. Danielle. A blast from the past. Jackie and Danielle have created a show where the past meets the present and what a gift it is. The insightfulness and the charm definitely shines through the host that keeps me entranced. Entranced, I love that. We are, we're, 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 we're little witchy. We're witch, we witchcraft. Yeah. Especially as a movie fan, this show tickles my fancy. I love we're it. also tickling fancies, Danielle. <laughs> yes, we That's are. That's so exciting. Thank you, bro, 1220. I, I don't think I say thank you to many bros, but to you, thank you. And I don't know what bro this is. It's not my bro. It's not. And it's not my bros either. <laughs> not mine either. <laughs> if you want to be featured and help us grow, head to Apple, Spotify, Podchasers, Good Pods, or your favorite podcast platform and leave us a review. And if you like what you hear, it takes a lot of effort. And sometimes we need a cup of coffee. So if you want to buy us a virtual cup, head over to ko-fi.com slash no more late fees to buy us a cup. And... If you're really into spending some moolah, then check out our Redbubble store at nomorelatefees.redbubble.com. Jackie, I bought me some more clearly Canadian. Clearly I love Canadian it. I love for the me. 90s girl in you. <laughs> Can well, we get endorsed by them? <laughs> I wish. I used to drink these motherfuckers like every day. Same. Yeah. And then I'm pretty sure Coral Springs Middle was like, you can't bring glass containers. And I was like, the fuck I can. <laughs> that, that is the biographical drama about the Mexican-American Tejano superstar Selena Quintanilla. The film follows her rise to fame and tragic death. The movie stars Jennifer Lopez, Edward James Almas, Constance Marie, Jacob Vargas, Lupe Antaveros. And Jackie Guerrera, who is written and directed by Gregory Nava, and you can currently watch it on HBO Max. But before we start, let's get into our ratings rewind. So you know the drill. Before we get into the movie, we'll reveal the rating our Y2K versions of ourselves would give. Then at the end, we'll see if our current selves agree with our initial rating. Would buy, would buy it again. <laughs> the best <laughs> would play on repeat. Five day rental. Would watch again. Two day rental. Okay, but nothing to write home about. 
and same day rental. It goes with Yolanda in the- trash. Burn that bitch. <laughs> Boosty caca. <laughs> So what is are you okay? I got so angry. I crushed my Canadian <laughs> bottle cap and it's metal and I cut my finger. Do you need a band-aid? Do you need a pause? I'm fine. Okay. For sure. <laughs> Fucking Steph- Yolanda. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Yolanda. <laughs> Steph, what was your Y2K rating? I actually, when I talked to my mom recently, I was like, hey, do we own the movie? And she's like, I don't think so. I could have sworn we did, but I feel like my little self, if I had the money at that time (laughs) it came out, I would have bought it because I was like everybody else in Corpus Christi, I was obsessed with it. So it was definitely, oh, would buy it movie for me at that time (laughs) Jackie so I was thinking about because I have not seen this movie since like it was probably on HBO when like after it left theaters Mm -hmm. and it was probably my mom because she was always into like true crime and stuff probably knew the story of Selena based on her murder and then was interested in watching it so I think it was like mom was like oh I really want to watch this movie sit down and let's watch it together so I remember watching it. I remember like thinking that that's a, it was a good movie. It was a really sad story, but I have not seen it since. So I will give it a five day rental. Oops. Danielle. So I had it on VHS, but I never bought it again on DVD when I, at some dumb reason, I got rid of all my VHSs and I'll never forgive myself for that. But I, I love this movie. Would it be it would it would it be a would buy? Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, I meant to say that. You know, I I am infamous for not saying my rating. <laughs> well, tell us about the box office. Okay, the movie had a budget of twenty million dollars. It is to be noted this movie was made by Warner Brothers. This is important because it'll come up later. It made thirty five point five million dollars, but this is only the United States box office. Don't know where the other numbers are, but this is what I could find. It is to be noted that Selena is the 10th highest grossing bio, bio, biopic, biopic of all time. And one of the things that kept coming up in the research was the fact that this movie happened really fast in comparison to like when Selena passed away. But it is to be noted that one of the reasons that the family says that they went so quickly to make this movie was because after Selena died, there were so many media projects. There was eight unauthorized biographies, six documentaries, and two unimproved films and production about their family. And so this led Abraham to start a production of an authorized biopic biopic within weeks of her death he said it obviously it was a process he found extremely difficult since the family was still mourning so really the reason behind having it so quickly was because they wanted to get ahead and to make sure that they were owning how selena's legacy was going to be lived and her story to be told and not for it to be told by all these other people Mm. so that's pretty much they felt like all the media had pushed them to that instead. So, which is actually really, really sad if you think about it. It is. So, yeah. I do appreciate, like, obviously from consumer's point of view, having the family so heavily involved in the movie. Because you you get a lot of biopics that... um, A lot of it is kind of inflated or falsified or they didn't actually know the dynamic and didn't consult with the families. Like what what I do love is like now that time has passed, so many people have like come out and, you know, have different thought or views because, you know, as we go through this movie, we'll see that Abraham was like very much taken over the viewpoint of of selena and her persona Mm -hmm. and obviously if a biopic was made and it was made 
like from my parents view and no other I mean obviously they have her sister and her brother and some mm -hmm. friends and stuff like that but like if my parents were making my biopic would be a totally different movie than if like my very close friends made a one for me so I, I think that's interesting as well because we know Selena was married and Chris you know he even wrote a book but he was be very little part of this movie and very little part of the tv show or anything that's really portrayed who Selena is yes he mm -hmm. only knew Selena for a short term but they were married so obviously he knew a different side of her so I I just find that interesting like I would love to hear more and I learned so much about this because of our wonderful bays at a roll call pod mm -hmm. uh, we are going to do our best on this episode but if you still feel like you want some more Selena mm -hmm. then you definitely should go check out their two-parter episode on their first season on their podcast because it's amazing so one of the interesting thing is things is that when they were casting for this movie it was over 21,000 women across the United States yeah. that auditioned for the part of Selena is probably one of the most difficult roles to be cast in a very long time. And I don't know, probably even now. That's a lot of people. That's a lot mm -hmm. of women to see. Yeah. That's kind of insane. Yeah, um, I don't know how they went through that process, but <laughs> <laughs> don't either. Even Constance Marie, who we know ended up playing as mom, she audition for the role of selena yeah. but they gave her the role of marcella, marcella. Mm -hmm. so she got the role of marcella which is hilarious because her and jayla are only four years apart yeah, yeah i thought that was really interesting <laughs> <laughs> and then there was a lot of protest i know when they did announce jayla because a lot of fans were like wait she's puerto rican like we can't find a Mexican American or we can't find like everyone's going to nitpick something. So I know she, there was some protests in the beginning, but yeah. And I give JLo credit. She worked her ass off to embody Selena. Yeah. No, but, but uh, no, but she, there's lots of, but there's, <laughs> there's a lot of, but. I, said, <laughs> I didn't mean it. Like I'm trying to and and JLo did work extensively with a lip syncing coach because the decision was made early on that they wanted Selena's voice to be the singing voice because it was too soon and her they felt like her fans would be upset if they weren't able to hear her singing in the movie. And so aside from the first three lyrics of Coma La Flor, she did all the lip syncing. Which I think was really smart. I mean, especially because this movie opened so many other people beyond Selena fans to see and hear her mm -hmm. life and to hear her music. And I think there would have been a complete disconnect because sometimes if you hear the movie's version and then you go and hear the artist, it's like, this doesn't match. Mm -hmm. And as much as people, what I was trying to say earlier when I got stuck in butt hell there was the fact that Warner Brothers was trying to push a non-Latina actress yes. to play the role of Selena. And I'm just like, what, what, what sense are we talking here? This is a, this is a, a person, a real person. And who are you trying to get? Julia Roberts? Right. <laughs> like... Ooh. Ridiculous. Jennifer Lopez was paid $1 million for her mm -hmm. role, which made her the highest paid Latina actress in the entertainment industry at that time. Yep. That's amazing. And she also got to stay in this like family house and she slept in her bed just to like get close to the family. And I thought that was really cool. I don't know. The sleeping in the bed thing kind of creeped me out because I don't know if I could do that. I mean yeah. like I understand <laughs> like but because if I was Selena I'd be like okay bitch you can play me but get out of my bed <laughs> get out of my bed don't yeah. my sheets no that's not good yeah she and said the family welcomed her with like open arms and I love that nice. mm -hmm. which is nice because you can still see that relationship is still yeah. alive and well because when it was the anniversary 
she did perform some of Selena's songs, which was really nice with the family, wow. which I loved. So the one thing I find kind of fucking hilarious <laughs> is that Lupe Ontiveros, who was 54 years old in 1997, played Yolanda Salvador, who was only 34 years old at the time of Selena's death. If you look up actual pictures of Yolanda, bitch look rough. <laughs> way rough <laughs> mm -hmm. I got to 34 and I was like I don't look like that bitch I'm doing something <laughs> right so, high oh fives all around 34? like Jesus okay well let's start we are backstage at her Astrodome concert is that correct did I get the dome yes. right <laughs> Shot in San Antonio, but it's supposed to be the Houston Astrodome, which yeah. is now, wasn't it torn down? Am I making that up? Oh, I feel sure. like it was torn down. Anyway, sports again. We're always <laughs> getting caught up in sports stuff. Sorry, I Shannon. like the sport. <laughs> <laughs> And so she has her iconic pur purple outfit. Stephanie has the Funko Pop. I do. <laughs> there she is. Oh, gorgeous. Um, so she's digging around her suitcase looking for her. Like, is this not like hung up and steamed in a garment bag somewhere? <laughs> not just not. like rumpled. It was it like a last minute wardrobe change? And she's like, oh, I brought this with me. Like, what's going on? Yeah, I think maybe they just got the in town late, and it's it's in the bag. I don't know. I'm like, that's such an iconic outfit. Like, like I know in the series, it was like they show her like designing it, and she's like, I'm gonna wear this. So I'm like, yes, that seems more like it. Like she was, she knew she was gonna wear that outfit, but yeah. I mean, I liked the chaos of like behind the scenes of a concert. Like, you know, oh, am I going to wear this? Am I going to do that? I don't know. I have so many bustiers. I could wear all of them. <laughs> but I mean, it was fun to see her look for it. And then you, everyone, like your eye goes to that purple in the suitcase and you're like, there it's it is. going to be that one. <laughs> it's there. And so then they show her and it was her largest concert she had played. And she gets taken around the stadium in like a chariot drawn by horses and like everyone is just eating it up everyone loves them some salinas what is her zodiac sign Do, does anyone know because i just <laughs> I feel feel Any like that was leo energy to the highest <laughs> and i love every second of it but i don't know if she's a leo though. she was born april 16th Ooh, she's got aries all right boo <laughs> i love that <laughs> I remember reading somewhere that JLo said coming out and hearing all that applause from the crowd, it really solidified like, oh, I'm meant to do this. I think before that she was kind of like, man, I don't know. People are, don't like me, don't want me to do this role. And then she said coming out and hearing that crowd, it just like, just gave her all the feelings and it just felt right. And it just like took her over. I, I, I love how like, she worked so hard to get the mm -hmm. part, even though she wasn't singing. She had to, I, how many like different songs did she have to sing? Hold on. Well, there were three in the first scene. Because mm -hmm. she did the medley of I Will Survive, Last Dance, and On the Radio, yeah, which I, I'm wondering, did she actually perform those at that concert? Like they are very, like, like I felt like it was very like American. Uh, no, like predicting the future. When why? Well, because it was like I will survive, which she didn't. Last dance, which was like it was her last big concert, Ooh. and she like start like the whole thing starts like on the radio. It's yeah. like when she like knew that she was gonna be big. And so it Jackie, was just that is some deep shit. I, have never... <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, <laughs> I, I love every second of that. It totally went over my head. Now I like to put on any questionnaire that asks me what languages I speak, I say English, 
And when it's where it says Spanish, I say Selena album. <laughs> I love that. I'm I'm bilingual in that way. Okay. <laughs> bitty bitty bum bum. <laughs> <laughs> And that. then after she does that medley of songs, it leads to when her father was younger and he was in a doo group called the Dinos mm -hmm. and they were so excited. They were practicing. They were ready. They were, uh, they actually got a gig. They show up and because they were Mexican, they were not allowed to play in the club. And so you can see like Abraham, Selena's dad has had the music in him all his life. And unfortunately, he was not able to succeed in his dreams. So then when we see little Selena kind of singing with him as he plays the guitar and stuff, he recognizes that she has talent and he's like, we're going to make something of this. So he goes out and buys a bunch of secondhand instruments. He's like, Suzette, you on the drums now. <laughs> What's the brother's name? A.B. I feel Maybe. like he went right into the Joe Jackson playbook and was mm -hmm. like, we gonna do this, which I find very interesting because like when we did bend it like Beckham, the dad had, you know, he played cricket and he had a very racist experience and he went, he flipped to the other side where his daughter was like not going to participate in anything while AB was like, oh no, I didn't make it, but you gonna do it. Yeah. Which yeah. he saw that in her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so then, sorry, I got distracted by Selena, little girl, chicken in shower. What? There was caca everywhere. <laughs> Her April. chicken name, April. <laughs> <laughs> got distra distracted. And Selena does from an early age, she's like, doo-wop isn't going to work for us. Like, that's not, <laughs> dad, you're living in the dark ages. She's like, it's so old. <laughs> <laughs> and I love how he's like, well, show me what you want to do. And they're just like rocking out. And he says, that's too cool for me. Play cool. Blue Moon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think they know what that was. <laughs> and you can tell Abraham is kind of a dreamer. And his wife has to kind of put up with his next crazy scheme. Because even she's like, instruments like we're gonna be a band now like what's going mm -hmm. on he's got what's happening he's calvin all over again but at least yes. he had better plans than making a record studio with no people to come <laughs> in <laughs> so he says let's open a restaurant and i mean he did kind of his own market research and is like you know what's really lacking in this town <laughs> a mexican restaurant <laughs> we can do that we make mexican food Bad. and so his wife is like okay i'm willing to go along with it but don't you fucking dare quit your job and he's like yeah no problem cut to mexican <laughs> restaurants doing well yeah. That's Selena and the Dinos playing up on stage, singing her little Somewhere Over the Rainbow. And so he quits. And then nine months later, they don't have any money. So, the, yeah. the stress, the stress. Reaganomics. <laughs> yes, it's all because of Reaganomics. I, we joke, but we're not joking. Yeah. Shit is it, real. I mean, they do say it's putting a lot of small businesses mm -hmm. out of business. So thanks, Reagan. We're, there's so many things we're dealing with from that shit, but let's continue. And we do get some exposition. Selena likes to climb on the roof of the house and sit up and stargaze and look at the moon. And I think it's Suzette climbs up there with her and mm -hmm. she's like, what are you doing? She's like, I'm dreaming about like what my life could be, which is foreshadowing for one of her major... English hits later on it just makes me think of the TikTok that I saw like I saw of somebody who is at a store or when you're at the gas station and you're like living your life and then that song comes on and you're like Fuck. you oh, just want to start crying like who is playing that right now <laughs> that oh. song it just resonates with so many people and it's, it's such a beautiful song oh yeah the first few notes of that piano you're like oh man here we go where the tissues <laughs> it's coming 
it's just yeah it's so memorable the next scene we see is the house is now now for sale and so abraham's like well we're taking the show on the road he buys a giant tour bus and is like we're just touring he he does call in a favor from his friend and so they play at just like the county fair it looks like mm -hmm. yeah the fair circuit for a bit there yes and so and you can see that they have growth at first it's like two people dancing and like three people just sitting in the shade kind of listening like it's not a big crowd at all but slowly they start getting because not only can selena dance, sing she dances too she performs her little heart out and there's just that energy that spark that's in her where she just endears people to her and it's very evident as you go through the movie that just people adore her and she adores her fans she allows kids up on her stage there's a scene um soon hereafter where kids start climbing up and dancing and the security guard goes to get them down and she's like nah like she wants to be with people that are feeling the same energy she's feeling it makes me wonder like if she had lived how she would have been able to deal with Dan culture and mm -hmm. the media you know because she was at yeah. that height and it's like they like to bring you all the way up here and then start tearing you down kind of thing mm -hmm. you could tell she was just a genuine person yeah. and I feel like that bubble of, fa of fandom of fame would have been disheartening yeah and hard well, and, like, one could argue even that, like, just being a genuinely kind person is ev what eventually led to her downfall because she just, like, fully trusted this lady, Yolanda, who seemed like they didn't vet very well before letting her handle, like, all the business for the boutiques yeah. and stuff like mm -hmm. that. She just, she had faith in people, and unfortunately, it did not end well. Yeah, I think, like, she did a lot to prove that she was just like l latched on and was just like I'll mm -hmm. do everything and she showed that she could do stuff but I just mm -hmm. think she just you know what Selena needed a black best friend I would have been there I'd have been like she don't seem right <laughs> so may right she, with that one where's her background <laughs> check yes. she got a little crazy well, eyes over there Selena what's her credit saying. score yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I remember listening to the My Favorite Murder podcast when they did her episode, and I love these ladies because they, like, dig deep into, like, the background and everything, and they said that, like, Yolanda was, like, calling them nonstop, like, I want to start a fan club, I want to start a fan club, I want to be the president, and I'm like, I'm sorry, but if somebody is calling me nonstop, the last thing I'd want to do is, like, bring them into my inner circle, Yeah, but they were just, like, we want her to, yeah, you know, she wants to start a fan club. Just let her start it. She can be the president. And it's like, oh yeah. If a friend or someone, if Danielle could have been there to be like, no, <laughs> <laughs> this lady is crazy. She red not flag on the you. field. <laughs> yeah. Somebody Abraham also does essentially take Selena's advice in the end and is like, they can't do do what forever. But he knows there's an kind of an untapped market for a female Tejano singer. And so he's like, you need to sing these songs in Spanish. And she didn't know Spanish. Which she, is his fault. True. He was like telling yeah. her, oh, your Spanish is not so great. It, you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's yes. like Nana telling me I can't make curry chicken red. Hello, pot, kettle. <laughs> you didn't teach me. That's you. When my mother listens to this episode, mom, you and dad speak Spanish fluently. What the hell? They never taught us Spanish. Oh. <laughs> I didn't mean to hold the mirror so close. <laughs> so she, I mean, she does pick it up, obviously, because she she has a bunch of hits in Spanish. And her mom does say, like, this industry isn't for women. And I don't know what you're trying to do here because they're going to eat her alive. Like, that this isn't going to happen. And, and he does like, he keeps the faith. He's like, she is special. Like we're going to do this thing. 
And so this is when we get the scene behind Stephanie, where mom gets on board and starts teaching Selena some of the classic like Tejano dance moves, the washing washing machine, machine. which we find out that is actually fake. Abraham said, (laughs) he said that whole scene was not a real thing. I I don't even think the washing machine is a real dance. (laughs) But people do it all the time now. (laughs) It is a fun little ditty. What did he say? Okay, Abraham confessed that the scene with Marcella teaching Selena the washing machine did not actually happen, but it is true that they would all sit on the beach by the ocean together as a family. You know, it's it's the movie. It's cinema, people. We've got to add a little... Yeah, little little spice. Stuff. And little I'm spice. sure they had, like, little family dance parties and stuff. I'm sure, like, she learned dance moves or just had like little dance parties with her family it probably just wasn't this specific instance you know sometimes when i used to go to the club back Uh in the day especially latin nights i would do that spin you know that spin (laughs) i get dizzy though i wasn't i didn't have that she had that good center selena (laughs) i would try to do i would really be in the music and i'm like selena move (laughs) <laughs> and do the spin and it wasn't good it wasn't good <laughs> hold yeah. me up now <laughs> <laughs> a little dizzy that was like the fun part of growing up in south texas was like school dances was like a good mix of like hip-hop today's hits and then a tejano song and then back to like pop songs and then a tejano song so like everyone at my school you know white black asian whatever they all knew how to dance to cumbias and it was it was a sight to see because then you go to like (laughs) other places in the country and it's like are they gonna play a cumbia no okay (laughs) i i I love that i think that's what's great about living in a multicultural existence like in new york definitely that happened and for sure here in South Florida, we're Miami adjacent pretty much. Yeah. Definitely there are some 90s booty music that <laughs> are in Spanish. And I'm like, I know all the words and all the dance moves. Mm-hmm. So yeah. <laughs> the one yeah. song I know all of the lyrics to in Spanish is it's the Christmas song. Oh, <laughs> I was going to say, is it the Christmas song that comes on every year? I mean, I probably, yeah, Feliz Navidad, I know all the words too, but yeah, there's, there's a, a, a pop, you go ahead. Uh, and, and then this is about the time that it, the dad's like always critiquing and the mom's like, lay off of them. They're just kids. They're trying their best. And he says something about the music and AB's like, I can write songs. So like, that's where we get our little, like, oh, AB's probably writing the majority of the songs from now on type thing. And then we see another performance at the fair. Their crowd is a little larger. So every time they perf- do another performance, they're getting more and more notoriety. Um, and Selena's performing and she, oh, and this is the first time she has her little jean, uh, she's wearing jeans and then her little jean jacket. <laughs> yeah. And he's showing us her Selena shirt. She takes off her jean jacket halfway through the performance and she has like a bedazzled bustier and dad is not having it. Yeah. When she took that jacket off, I was like, go sister, you better run. <laughs> Your daddy's going to come snatch you off that stage. <laughs> I love how he says, you're just wearing a bra with sprinkly things on it, <laughs> <laughs> which is the most dad thing to say ever. <laughs> <laughs> and then dad's like, would you look at this? And the mom's like, I helped her make it. <laughs> she looks good. She yeah. co-signed that. That's so bra. If uh, man, boosty caca was like <laughs> a, another phrase that my family would just like throw out there. And That's just, boosty yeah. caca. Stole it from, yeah, love that line. <laughs> my favorite line, my family's favorite line in this whole movie is when the bus breaks down. And then like Selena, Selena with an S, with an S, 
my sister's name is Serena. So every time we watch this movie, we would jokingly say, and we'll say it to her now. We're like, Selena. She's like, fucking <laughs> age you guys. <laughs> Yeah, so that's the next scene is the bus breaks down. They're like, at first, I don't know if it was A.B. or Paul go out, trying to flag down a car or nothing. And then Selena's like, I got this. And so she <laughs> yeah. like goes out and these two guys and like this sports car pull over. <laughs> Gonna get this fucking like Greyhound bus like towed. And, but yeah. they are enamored. They know exactly who she is. Anything for Salinas. Wes, orale, rewind. Oh, <laughs> I love that line too. <laughs> they were just, they loved her. It was such an endearing scene because I feel like that was kind of like a mo the first moment where she's like, oh my God, like people are, they're putting me on this pedestal. Like I'm yeah. just singing and having fun with my family, but like oh, these guys are like all into everything that I do. <laughs> well, and then later on, they tell Abraham about it because they're like, they pulled their damn fender off and then uh, insisted on keeping it and they were going to mount it to the wall because Selena's bus did that. Like, they're like, dad, you've got to hear this shit. <laughs> it just, what, it just <laughs> happened today. So they start getting the idea, like Stephanie said, that, hey, People are starting to recognize us. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Making a name for themselves. And it's around this time where Selena is expressing more and more interest in clothing design. She she wants to design. And there are some points where she it seems like she may want to design more than she wants to sing. Mm -hmm. Like that's her true passion. Because the singing is something that she enjoys, but that was always like her dad encouraging that. It wasn't... She went to her parents and said, I need to be a singer. Help me be a singer. It yeah. was something that, and it was always a family affair. So I'm sure that's a motivating factor in her singing career too, mm -hmm. is having yeah. her family with her. And then the next scene is they need a new guitarist. And so it's like all the girls peeking around. <laughs> And it is this long-haired dude just shredding a guitar. And this is when we meet Chris. And at first, Dad's like, no, no way. We don't need a rocker. And they're like, we'll clean him up a little bit. It's fine. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll do it. So Suzette gives him a little haircut, gives him an undercut and a ponytail, slick back ponytail. And then calls Selena into the room. And she's like, what do you think? And Selena's like, God damn. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good. <laughs> it, looks, it's like, it looks fine. And that now, was actually the scene where he's auditioning when they focus on his hand. That's actually Chris Bettis playing because mm. John Seda said, like, I can't play. So they actually had Chris play the, that guitar riff. Which oh, is that's cool. cool. Yeah. So And and then the next scene is Selena and Chris go out for pizza because you immediately can tell they have hard eyes for one another. And, and I ahead. love how, like, how Selena is just like, I will eat all day. Mm -hmm. And everyone's like, how is she eating this much? She stays so skinny. But I, I, I believe this is how she was in real life too. Like, she loved Snacking. food. And I'm like, a girl after my own heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like extra pepperoni. I'm like, oh, that's my pizza order. <laughs> oh, pepperoni too, sweet. And then Chris is kind of showboating, like pours way too much hot sauce on his pizza. And so they're just like getting to know mm -hmm. one another. Getting to know you. Getting to know all about you. <laughs> I love and it. And then. It, it, I, I don't know if they get a different bus or if they get the bus renovated, but anyway, Susie has a snack cabinet and she's like, <laughs> I love it too. I'm here for that too. I feel like that, that snippet, <laughs> like if I were to make a list of why I love you, this is <laughs> this how like you were like, anyways. Back to the bus, the soup. 
cabinet is the most important part of this movie. It is. <laughs> Don't touch it's Johnny. Cabinet. It's Johnny Shoe Fund from a <laughs> barbershop. And then it's Susie's Snack Cabinet. Well, Daddy. I just... Finding the hard facts. <laughs> <laughs> I just love this scene because it's like she's like side eye the guys, like, don't you be touching my snacks. And as soon as she walks away, Selena's like, Doritos, mine. Yep. And then like they're like, You're touching Susie's snacks. She's like, Yeah, I am. Watch me eat all these Doritos. <laughs> like, yeah. I just love how she's like, doesn't give a shit. If she wants snacks, she's gonna snack. Mm-hmm. She doesn't give a shit whose cabinet that is. Yeah, that's totally my brother Benny. Like, we can't have any leftovers in the house. I could write, we write our name on it. <laughs> And it's still eaten that night. And we're like, dude doesn't care. (laughs) We would, my uncle Pat does that too. We call him the midnight thief. So like if we would go out to a restaurant, we would have to hide that like in the back of the fridge or put our name. Like it doesn't matter. Name nothing. If you didn't want it, you shouldn't have put it in the fridge. That was his (laughs) motto. Still is. Suzette, we feel you. We relate to you. Uh, we got you. <laughs> <laughs> and then they just stop for dinner. There's a taco truck and, and snacks and stuff. And Kislina be snacking. And the taco truck is playing the radio and they hear that they're number one. And so they all get really big excited and they're they're finally number one. And it's like essentially what they've strived for the entire time was to have a hit song on the charts and then after this everyone's in a great mood selena and chris are kind of dancing on the bus and everything and they hit a bump and it like knocks them together so then they stop making out (laughs) on the bus daddy is not going to like it (sighs) abraham had big opinions about chris and his daughter he he I think he still does. Yeah. 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 I think so too. Then this is where we kind of get the the speech by Abraham how they're Mexican American. They grew up in Corpus Christi. That's where they live. They are American, but they're not American enough to be American and they're not Mexican enough to be Mexican. And they have to like essentially be overachievers in both areas know the history, speak the language perfectly. And so he said, it's just a lot of pressure, not just like on Selena with her singing career, but just like for families of that heritage in general. I feel like that speech was probably one, not one of the first times, but like, I personally very much related to that on so Mm -hmm. many different levels, but I, I, I think that could speak for my family being immigrants and Mm -hmm. coming to this country and like having to take every single opportunity and, you know, not wavering. I I feel that way about just being black in this country, you know, Mm -hmm. and having to work a million times harder for anything, that mentality that's kind of drilled in you. But also, I can, I definitely could feel like that of growing up in the suburbs mm-hmm. <laughs> and then going into all uh, Black spaces and, and kind of s- being made fun of for sounding yeah. or speaking white or, or anything mm-hmm. like that and having to feel like I have to overachieve and be a little bit more so that you could be accepted. So when yeah. that speech happened, I was just like, oh, I can relate to that. Yeah. yeah. I Especially- remember that's one thing I really appreciate about my dad growing up that he never sugarcoated anything. He was always very like, like, Hey baby, you're a woman, but you're also a Hispanic woman. And there's going to be some like hurdles in your way and you're going to have to work harder and you're going to have to like push yourself a little bit harder, like from playing basketball or being an orchestra or things like that. My dad was always like, no, I'm not going to baby you. Like you can, you got to step it up and you've got to like walk it off and got all those little phrases growing up. But Mm -hmm. I know all the stuff that he went through and I know he was just trying to like prepare us and 
the real world, it's, it's different out there. I can't baby you. I can't like protect you from everything. So I'm going to toughen you up now and you should be able to face whatever comes your way. I am thankful for him. Like I said, not sugarcoating things and just saying like, you know, there's a lot going against you because you're a woman, but you're also a Hispanic woman. So Mm -hmm. like, that's just, you know, how it is. I also feel like in, in so many generations now, it's also like a trauma response. Now that we think about it, you know, Mm -hmm. that idea that you have to be the super minority to excel. I just want to be mediocre. I'm tired. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Right. I just, I want to do fucking nothing. Yeah. You know? Bare minimum. (laughs) Go Google it. I'm done Uh, teaching you today. (laughs) I want to get on TikTok and say the stupidest fucking thing ever and be the most mediocre and get millions of views for doing absolutely nothing. I want to do a TikTok dance that... (laughs) a one-year-old could repeat and everyone thinks I'm the hot shit that's how mediocre I want to be do it make up a TikTok dance for to a Selena song there you go I have too much rhythm for it to be effortless we got the washing machine we need the dryer yeah it's the dishwasher (laughs) (laughs) my dance will be like (laughs) hello and (laughs) boom 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 the numbers popping no, seriously, I would love that the next generation could just be mediocre. And because we're tired, we're tired. Yeah. Selena Everyone's was, tired. Selena was <laughs> carrying her damn family on her back. She, she tired. was. <laughs> yeah. So after that speech, Abraham also says, like, you can't date Chris. Like, that's a no go, man. And so Chris, in a weird attempt to distance himself from Selena, invites <laughs> all of his like metal buddies over to trash a hotel room. I'm sorry. That like, that's love because I would for sure have been like, we're done. What the? F- yeah. Mm-hmm. That was a lot. That was a lot of money. Exactly. And it's like, now you're disrespecting her parents. Like it was just everything, her reputation. Yeah. Like, and she was just like, I know this isn't who you are. I'm mm-hmm. like, but it is right now. Use <laughs> okay. your words, Chris. I, I don't want people to come for me. Okay. Tell I me. have watched this movie a lot, mm-hmm. but I rewatching it for this episode, I will, I have to say it that with some age some of these scenes are a little bit like uh, overacting i may say yeah chris is acting not great yeah that voice that voice that he uses i'm like <laughs> <laughs> the scene where selena wants to get married when she's mm-hmm. trying to convince chris like let's just go run away was a little much for me i'm Look, y'all, don't don't hate on that me. Was, I, it no. just was like uh, this when is I rewatched. Lot. I thought the same thing too with that scene. Like, I'm brave enough to say it. <laughs> I was scared, but I, now that you have said it too, I feel much better. Thank you, Stephanie. I was watching it, and I'm like, "You will never accept us." I'm like, <laughs> "Okay, <laughs> I'm still and, in a hotel." <laughs> and after that, when they elope and they go to like they it, it's announced on the radio and then they go back to her, they're like let's give him a day to cool off and then she goes and speaks to her dad do you really think honestly do you think that abraham was like i'm sorry i knew no, i pushed you, know you, you away what you had to i do. just had to cry my feelings last night and i'm cool now like this man has had all these feelings and emotions this whole movie and then suddenly oh i just needed a day like yeah what <laughs> i just i i felt like re-watching this movie now with all the knowledge that i have from just like the internet and what they've said about abraham mm-hmm. uh, i'm not trying to have any hate towards him but and from what we've seen, there's no way that he was just like, it's okay. We're all a family now. I I just don't believe that. Welcome to the family, son. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I questioned that one. 
I do remember reading as well that like there was talks of them wanting to take out the elopement scene because he was worried that her fans would think that doing that was okay. He, he was worried about young girls. Abraham, you lie. <laughs> if you could erase Chris, you would. Yeah. 100%. If he could erase that Selena, if the whole public didn't know that they had gotten married in this biopic, he would be gone. Yeah. That's yeah. my personal opinion. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I don't believe it. Yeah. No, I think a lot of fans feel that too. And I just wonder what he has on Chris to keep Chris quiet all these years in that way. Yeah. Because he's I know still Chris paying off that too. hotel room. <laughs> 40. So where are we now? So after he trashes the room, obviously, logical next step, Chris is fired. And mm-hmm. Selena's like, no, no, no he's not fired it's very it's like very little mermaid like but daddy i love him (laughs) (laughs) but they do also say something like it's kind of in the background where they're like we can't get another guitarist in this short period of time they're like well ab like ab does say like dad no chill out calm down we're going to mexico we're not going to be able to find another guitarist yeah Mm -hmm. yeah and so so they go to mexico and this is like abraham had had a conversation with selena in a previous scene where he's like you need to practice your spanish oh that's what led into the whole mexican-american conversation Mm -hmm. Because he's like, you need everyone to love you right off the bat. So if your Spanish is not perfect, Mm -hmm. they're going to find any reason to tear you apart. And when they they say they, he's talking about the media is going Mm -hmm. to like, you know, persecute her pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. So we do get a scene where she's at a press conference and she does stumble over her Spanish a little bit. And so she uses an English word, but because she's Selena and just so endearing and so cute when she does it, everyone is just enamored with her. And so she's kind of captured the hearts of not only the fans, but also the media. And so she's just kind of like everyone's darling. Mm-hmm. And not only is she super talented, both in singing and dancing, but also fashion and now like she pretty much has everyone eating out of the palm of her hand. And it seems pretty effortless too. It's not like she has to put a whole lot of thought behind it. It's just who she is because she's so authentic. And so next they have a performance. This is when she has her performance. And what happens is that they only slated for what, like 10,000 people maybe? Yes. And And for a hundred thousand showed up and people are like being pushed to the brink of the stage and like it's insanity. And as soon as she starts performing, people are like literally getting crushed and everyone's kind of losing their mind. She could feel the stage shake. And I believe that I think it's this concert that she was saying how scared she was that this, she felt like the stage was going to collapse. Yeah. And so she goes out, like, the whole band exits this, exits the stage, but then they're like, these people are going to riot, and it's going to be an even worse situation if if you don't get back out there. Can you crowd control? And she's like, yeah, I can do that. And so she just goes back out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she was that <laughs> flippant about it. I think she was concerned, and she was like, I'll, I'm yeah. gonna, I'll try. But yeah. she does talk to AB about the music and like how she's going to ease into is it, is it on the floor mm-hmm. yeah she's she slowly guides them into like let's come let's <laughs> <laughs> and even at one point she like does the shh motion <laughs> and the entire that. crowd gets quiet so then she's she knows like okay if like i need to say i i think internally she's probably like they're going to listen to me if I'm like, everyone, two steps back. <laughs> Give room to your neighbors. But, for a minute, real <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was giving me kind of 
flashbacks and I wasn't even there no. to Travis Scott's performance where people actually died because the crowds were like pushing and like up against the, mm. the grading and stuff. So like that gave me a little panic is like people have died from this. Like someone needs to like disperse the crowd. I don't know if you guys have ever been in a situation like that. It is one of the scariest scenarios you could be in. After the concert, Nan and Chris are walking on the beach and she's talking about how she didn't have a normal childhood, but tonight she realized her dreams are the same. Like essentially she's living out the dreams of all of the, the people in the crowd. And that essentially gives her her why for what, why she's doing this. And, and she says, I just, I just feel really lucky that I get to be the one who, who makes these people happy. And this is where she and Chris say, I love you. And then back on the bus, Chris and Selena are just being cute. Like he has a little stuffed animal as a surprise for her. And they're being very sweet together. And dad, at, at one point I'm like, this is a scene where there's a bus crash, right? Because dad's not looking at the road. <laughs> He's fully oh, turned around in his seat watching <laughs> Selena and Chris. Instead, he like pulls the bus over, kicks the band off the bus to have a yeah. family meeting and essentially is like, you can't see Chris anymore. You can't be together. And Selena's is like, fuck that noise. <laughs> like, the hell I can't. And you know my real like, daddy slam. <laughs> <laughs> and he does say, you're really young. You're only 20. And she's like, we love each other and we want to get married. And Chris is like, or no is chris he, the one that says he says it and she's like yeah yeah oh, we do <laughs> yeah that's 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 what we want i'm surprised she didn't turn around and say baby really <laughs> like right <laughs> but then she does this look of like huh yeah we want to get <laughs> and then chris is fired again <laughs> Chris, stay looking for a job. You ain't got no real job, Chris. And then he does say, it's okay. I'll find my own way. And I'm like, Chris, way. you're not going to find anything. I mean, <laughs> Suzette Edward... cuts your hair for you. <laughs> <laughs> Edward James almost deserved an Academy Award for just the way he can yell at someone. Like, I, I, he, his yelling was so intense. I almost wanted to cry of dis. Like I thought I disappointed him, <laughs> and I was like, "I'm, I'm sorry, Dad. Like, uh, I'm sorry, wanted. Edward James. Almost, I'll do He's better. I felt that in my core. Like, oh, dang, who upset him? <laughs> he is one of our greatest actors of all time, and I don't think he gets enough credit at all, at all. Yeah. He does not get his flowers as he should. Oh, I mean, sure. the uh, amount of work. One of my very first movies that I can remember watching was Stand and Deliver. Yes. And it's one of those teacher who changed lives movies that wasn't mm -hmm. like a white saver movie. Mm -hmm. And yeah. of course, Lou Diamond Phillips being in it, which is like <laughs> cherry on top. But like... I love that man. He and the fact that Abraham did not want him to play the role. Abraham. He apparently said he didn't have a problem with him, but there was someone else that he had envisioned. Okay. There was another actor, but he couldn't play the role. He wanted it to be Ruben Blades. Oh, yeah. I don't know who that is off the top of my head. But apparently he had a scheduling conflict, so he could not play the role. And Edward James almost had to gain like 30 pounds to play this role. Mm -hmm. Ooh. I do know who Ruben Blades is when who I see his he? picture. I thought... You gotta look uh... at his picture. <laughs> You'll know who he is when you see him. I could be completely wrong, but I thought his name was like Ruben Blades, but oh, I, I did I? I'm not a hundred percent. I messed that up. I gringoed that. My bad. <laughs> because you look at it, it looks like blades. You're I, not wrong. I'm I'm sorry. I knew it had to have something, and but I was like, you know, but it, I don't see. Okay. Yeah. No, look I, at me messing up again. God it, damn it could it. be blades. I don't see like 
an accent on it either. So I'm like, I could be just. But it just to be safe, Ruben Blades, is that right? I'm thinking, yeah. Okay. But I Not saw him and I'm like, oh, okay, I know who you're talking it about. It kills me. Honestly, it really bothers me as a Black person that in scenarios with the Latin community that I could be gringo essentially because <laughs> you know what I mean I don't know how to explain it but I don't like it you know? <laughs> I don't like it you Steph it. Stephanie's just so nice that she's like everyone a for effort you tried your yes. best and that's all we can ask for <laughs> no that's not acceptable I'm, I'm thinking the way I saw it was like I feel like I've heard his name before and I thought it was said like this but like I said I'm not 100 percent. Stephanie I'm, like I'm wrong I am gringo on this shit up <laughs> okay <laughs> and I know David is listening right now laughing his ass off <laughs> It looks like yeah. blades. If you go to IMDb, it looks like it says Ruben I, Blades. <laughs> I don't like this. Okay. <laughs> this the feeling, accent. it's new. It is. It's different. <laughs> I was I saw a TikTok that was hilarious because they were saying that black people, the way that we feel about the Selena movie and Selena the artist goes, we go hard as if she was our own. So we don't know the language. But we right there. Exactly. That's You're right or die. We're <laughs> right there at the jail, ready to put hands on that bitch. Okay. And that's all that matters. <laughs> that's all that as matters. As long as you say fuck Yolanda, you're cool. <laughs> you can say blades all you want. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't you know. God dang. But I also don't want to be like that overzealous, like, um, it's actually yeah bonita <laughs> no i don't want to do that either you know what i mean over yeah. accent everything yeah that's like overzealous gringo yeah i don't want to do that either okay you're good wouldn't it be gringa because you're female <laughs> probably okay <laughs> <laughs> probably moving on now we're at a water park Oh. also i double dog dare ya. yeah what is happening i dare me to go and risk my life on this slinky shot okay no selena what are we doing no yeah so it's selena bungee jumps which looks like one step above a carny rig <laughs> i was disappointed that she didn't stick her middle finger up like the aerosmith video yes. my brain oh. i think my brain as i'm getting older is starting to just meld pop culture references that. together and i was you know i'm like oh she doesn't stick her middle finger i was like wrong wrong thing wrong thing wrong thing <laughs> I feel like that, though. there are little people in my head pulling out the wrong files that's what's happening <laughs> <laughs> tell me more about the little people in your head. Yes. <laughs> well if you what ever you listen to me i sound erratic right because there's multiple people in control here there's not one it's they're all literally fighting. like inside out and then like your memories are just like rolling around because they really? dropped them yeah they're fighting for the mic every day <laughs> <laughs> every every second of the day they're fighting for the mic oh my God. okay i love that <laughs> sometimes they just hit the pause button and then danielle's just like i'm back <laughs> what happened i'm I blacked definitely out. deep in thought or they're <laughs> what happens in those pauses is that they're fighting right <laughs> nobody can get to the mic because they're beating each other up <laughs> and so i'm like just waiting for someone to take I'm control like, <laughs> there's a glitch there's a glitch i love when she jumps off the the thing that always sticks in my brain with i know that scene and is when I see her late, her feet just flutter. Yes, they're just like, choo, 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 choo. <laughs> like there's no screaming, there's no like big arm <laughs> flailing. It's just a little of like a couple doggy paddle kicks. And I don't know, I don't know uh, how anybody does that bungee jump. No, like it's I pray this rope <laughs> is strong <laughs> and, and isn't we'll, long enough to hit the floor. It doesn't give me whiplash, like. 
that's one I'm like no we don't ever need to do that one it could nope. ne- I could never if you found my obituary and it said this bitch died because she <laughs> did bungee jumping you know there's something suspect about there because there's one of no those way. voices just mm-hmm. what was one of the voices <laughs> no the voices they all agree on a few things <laughs> and that, that is one that they're like oh no we don't do that <laughs> thank you and so this is also around the time we find out she and chris are still seeing each other in secret and finally she's like let's just go get married let's get it over with and he's like no you got a gig in el paso and she's like fuck the gig in el paso you are bigger than the gig in el paso and so then they just go get married and like we explained earlier they were scooped from by some pops some paparazzi paparazzi I don't know why I said paparazzi. Sound real boss. Box. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. And so then dad had his whole roller coaster of emotion, but then randomly welcomed Chris in with loving, kind arms. Yeah. And <laughs> now we're all caught up from the where we sorry, fighting for the mic again. I don't know. Now we're now we're back to the performance that we saw at the beginning of the movie at the Alamo Dome. So this is her last concert scene and it was originally at the Astrodome, but they did not film the scene at the Astrodome. They filmed it at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio and it was packed with 35,000 extras. And Chris is rehired because now he's (laughs) part of the family. Call HR. (laughs) And so... Now she, and Selena says, I want the whole world dancing to my music and wearing my clothes. So now she's kind of going into her next entrepreneurial adventure, which is opening up boutiques and creating a fashion line. Which Um, I feel like Selena just laid the blueprint and Jayla was like, I got it. (laughs) Just saying. Finished his legacy there when it came to fashion and design and kind of being a well-rounded artist and kind Mm -hmm. of having their hand in music. Obviously, Selena didn't get to do any movies or TV, but design and things like that. And then we get a bitty bitty bomb bomb montage of her just selling out concerts, doing her thing in all of her gorgeous ensembles. Mm. And then she's told that the record sales are fantastic. They feel like she's the next Gloria Esteban. And so they want to do a crossover record that is English. And so that's when she starts working on her English record. She has to go to, um, Tennessee quite a bit and record there in the studios and the studio where I could fall in love is recorded in the movie is studio a in Q productions where Selena actually recorded her English album. So that was kind of neat that they got to go back and revisit that for the movie. Yeah. Um, And this is okay. So we are like well into an hour and a half into this movie and I'm like, Yolanda hasn't shown up yet like and she's kind of a key piece of this movie and where is she so she finally shows up she I'm glad that she isn't because I I mean I know what you're saying like where the hell is this bitch but (laughs) I'm glad that she I I feel like they probably gave us enough information Mm -hmm. about her but didn't put too much focus about her yeah which focus the movie more about selena's life which i appreciated but Mm -hmm. god when she came on the scene Uh, that poor actress because i'm sure she's a very lovely person but if i ever see her in the street it's gonna be real hard not to say shit that's what i was telling you jackie i did that tiktok (laughs) <laughs> and I was like, if I see her, it's on site, right? Like I had a picture of her yeah. in the background of the actress. Everybody was in our comments talking about, you know, that lady's dead in real life, right? And I felt bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we don't win them all on this podcast. I think she yes. had cancer and stuff like 
I feel bad for her. Like she's dead and she didn't even kill Selena, but in death she's got some dumbass black girl with a podcast <laughs> talking shit about her on green screen. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't right. It was an honest mistake. Now you know, just double check before you talk shit that they're at least still alive. I'm reposting that video when this, <laughs> <laughs> this episode comes like out. Like a little disclaimer, like we recognize that she is dead. I'm sure she's a very lovely person and I hope she did not suffer, but also fuck you, Content. Wanda. Yeah. Oh, right. Fuck you, Wanda. <laughs> Content. <laughs> All day, every day. So we do get introduced to Yolanda, and it's like she she was the president of our fan club. Now she handles all the business for the boutiques. It's like that was a that was a jump. Like she's handling all your fi- finances. Okay, yeah. I don't know how Abraham let that ha- happen. That's yeah. real sus. With him being as controlling as he was, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, I don't know about that one. Yeah. You then, don't find that suspicious? I had to get it. I just had to say it. Sorry. <laughs> so Chris, uh, Selena and Yolanda and Sarah, who is like, I, the character of Sarah is based on one of Selena's cousins in real life. They're all getting pedicures and Chris comes in and he's like, Paul can't go to the Oscars. We have an extra ticket. So she's like, Sarah, let's go. And Sarah's like, but I have inventory. I'm like, bitch, you know, the owner of the shop and she's saying you can go like, (laughs) calm down. Two, two important parts of this scene. One, Yolanda's thirsty ass is like, I know inventory. I could do it. I got this. No worries. You go. Ah, Crazy eyes. I was like, (laughs) relax, bitch. Secondly, I want to say, I'm going to put it out there, that Selena was the best boss fucking ever. She said, all my employees need to be getting a pedicure every week. week. (laughs) Word, Selena! (laughs) I I want to go into my job interviews from now on. (laughs) and It's part of your writer list? (laughs) What? What you offering? Okay, I see. Okay, 401k. Okay, I see that. Money looking right. (laughs) But I do notice you don't have a pedicure, (laughs) budge. (laughs) I don't see a pedicure program on here. (laughs) The pedicure clause. I feel like that should be your negotiation piece every time. It's like, Okay, I see, like, we can't really come to an agreement on, like, the pay is a little, like, there's a little bit of a discrepancy. Why don't you throw in a weekly pedicure? <laughs> Maybe we're, we're probably good. And here, in the, it's called nail, nail, nail trends. That's with a Z at the end. <laughs> you can look up their pricing. Thanks. <laughs> So now, yeah, Yolanda's taking care of inventory. Wonder what she's doing with those fucking numbers. Yolanda. The math ain't math in Yolanda. Nope. Mm-mm. He's going to ask for them receipts and their re- those records. FYI. First of all, Selena should have never had to approach. Where the fuck was Abraham? So there is... I know she says, I'll handle it dead, but still. No, no, no. Like, I feel like I read that there's a discrepancy in that. And actually, Yolanda, to lure Selena to the hotel, told her she had a gift for her, and it was the ring. Mm. IRL. And the the reason why she got that ugly ass egg ring was because Selena collected Fabergé eggs. Yeah, she did. did So what you're saying is... Our weird collections are going to be the end of us. <laughs> Which one, though? I know. That's exactly <laughs> the first question I asked. Not to obviously make light of what happened to Selena, but it actually does, for a collector <laughs> of nonsense, it makes me scared. That is my Achilles heel. Shit. Don't tell any about your weird collection. I know. Too late. This podcast two years <laughs> old. I don't know what I'm <laughs> I open up Dorables on YouTube. Like, they know. It's too late. (laughs) So 
so now they're they get to LA and Sarah realizes she doesn't have anything to wear. So they go to the mall. And this is where the pretty woman moment the happens. Woman where like this uppity white woman is like, oh, that dress is eight hundred dollars. And Selena's like, take it off the, the fucking mannequins. I want to try it on. And then my favorite scene is the stock boy. <laughs> Selena's it's Selena's. <laughs> and I he love how he says that and like he thinks other people are like, where are we? <laughs> who are you yelling at and who understands them? But I mean, word spread and all of a sudden everyone is in that store asking for autographs. Sarah comes out of the dressing room and like gives the like Mm, I don't want it. And Selena like turns to that bitchy ass lady and is like, thanks, we don't need the dress. I Love wonder it. where they ended up going to get her dress though. They still had to get her something to wear. <laughs> for um, <someone>. Exactly. <laughs> they, there's always some sort of like prom dress store in the mall. You just yes. go there. That's yeah. true. And that night at the Grammys, she wins the 1994 Grammy for Best Mexican American Album. Album, okay. Mm. Yes. And the album was Selena Live. Correct. Mm -hmm. So she wins. She got some Dallas hair going on. That the higher the hair, closer to God. <laughs> that was beautiful. <laughs> That's all I got to say. I mean, her, her dress was gorgeous. Mm -hmm. That's why I laughed so hard when I saw an Instagram post when someone said, the post was a bunch of pictures from 10 Things I Hate About You and said, oh, the hairstyles. And I looked at the first picture and I, I had to think for a second because 10 Things I Hate About You is not a hairstyle movie where I'm like, oh, there was, there were styling, right? And so I see these pictures and it's, Half up, half down. A few <laughs> butterfly clips. A French braid. More half up, half down. A ponytail. Another ponytail. And I was like, y'all need to go look at Selena. She had seven <laughs> wigs in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Those are hairstyles. Yeah. Sorry. I just <laughs> was like... I love how you gestured with your lipstick. <laughs> Well, the lip gloss knows the direction of what's popping. <laughs> yes. So now we see Selena progressing in the fashion world. She has her first runway show. It seems to go very well. And there's these ladies, I'm assuming, that work for Selena's company. And they're like, we're all going to pitch in and buy Selena a super nice ring. Yolanda, you want to pitch in? And Yolanda's like, give me all your money. <laughs> And they're just like, <laughs> okay. Also, like, did no one else who was around this crazy bitch not say, this is a red flag, Selena? Yes. Like, I don't understand. Nobody was getting a gut feeling. No one. So Yolanda takes the money and goes shopping and buys that ugly ass Fabergé egg ring thing. Meanwhile, Selena is recording her album in Tennessee and I'm super proud of it. They're like, this is gold. We've got a hit on our hands. Dad is so proud. And he's like, you've broken down all of these barriers, not only for yourself, but like for women and Latina women. And then there's this weird scene where like Yolanda is just aggressively massaging Selena's shoulders while Selena chooses fabric. I'm like, what's happening? Why? When we become rich and famous... <laughs> and we have to hire an assistant. One of the the little line items on what they're supposed to be doing, it's going to be aggressively massage my shoulders <laughs> randomly. <laughs> Cue Selena movie. Crazy eyes. <laughs> and Yolanda. book our weekly pedicures. pedicures. <laughs> That's what we will offer as yes. to our employees. Yes, we can pay you zero dollars and not really pay for your pedicures right now, but we are taking applications for help. 
we will thank you on the show. <laughs> we will not just, we will not do that to people. We are going to be very good employers. Crazy as hell, but it's going to be all out in the open it's from the true. start. I mean, if you listen to the podcast, like we're not putting on any pretenses here. <laughs> this is as bad shit as it gets. And it's always like this. Come work yes. for us one day. Come work. <laughs> and I, what I what I do love is like people say like there's always like a comedian and a straight person, but like I think it's just who's like we level out. If Jackie's yeah. going a little <laughs> crazy, I'm I'm like, well, you need to tone that down. And then if I go a little crazy, she's just like, oh, you need to tone that down. And then sometimes it's like, ah. Man. <laughs> like our pecker episode where we turned into Linda my name is Lorraine <laughs> <laughs> the most unhinged episode we've ever done yes <sighs> hey I'm Blake and I'm Dave and we're the co-hosts of First Prize Films it's a comedy podcast where we take two films of the same genre separated by at least a decade and battle them to the death metaphorically nope Literally. God. So if you want to hear two dickheads talk about genre movies and hopefully give you a couple laughs, then search First Prize Films on your favorite podcast platform or find us on social media at First Prize Pod. We also stream every week on Twitch. Swing by, chat movies, and tell us how fucking dumb we are. Because we're pretty dumb. <laughs> See ya. Bye ya. And Selena is now mowing her own yard because she's a real one. Mm -hmm. And she starts talking to Chris about how she wants a little farm and animals and maybe some animals of their own. And he's like, you talking about kids? <laughs> and he, she's like, yeah. So they kind of decide after her tour for this upcoming album, they're going to start trying to have children. She tells her mom about her. Her mom's super excited to oh. be a grandma. I know. And you know what's coming. And so dad calls a meeting with Yolanda and Selena and is like, this isn't adding up. Like there's these weird checks that are being written. I don't know who they're being cashed to. Yolanda, you got some explaining to do. And Yolanda is just like, <laughs> not me. And he's like, he's like, but all of this. And she's like, nope, not me. <laughs> and like she, I'm like, are you just going to sit there and did not like, Girl, you you were in charge of the budget. Like, if not you, who? Yeah. And so, and, and she does say in that really creepy stalker way, I wouldn't take anything from Selena. I love Selena. Again, more red flags. And so dad does request accounting of all of the money and he wanted all of her records that she had. And he kind of dismisses her, but Selena follows her out to her car and she's like, how could you do this to me? Like we were okay. friends. Yeah. Yeah. Bitch, I gave you free pedicures. Now I got to take that clause out. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> and, and, oh, and also when she's telling her mom about wanting to have kids and stuff like that. She, she's talking about the upcoming tour and she's like, do you think they're going to love me, mama? Because I think she's probably stayed in like the Mexico, like Southwest yeah. region. And her mom's like, yeah, they're going to love you. And then, then we see an empty stadium and music starts playing, but like over the music are like these news packages about how Selena was found shot in a hotel room and Yolanda's in a car threatening to kill herself. Like, do it, bitch. Do it. Yeah, please. I don't want my money to pay for you sitting in a jail cell. Like, be gone with you. Yeah. And so this is when Dreaming of You starts playing and we get the scene where her parents are told that she didn't make it in the hospital and all of her fans show up and I think it was like 35,000 extras came out to do the candlelight vigil scene for Selena. And in the movie, it, they say that Yolanda lured Selena to a hotel room to give her the documentation that mm -hmm. was requested and instead shot her and killed her. And she was only 
23 years old. And then the movie ends with footage of life, the footage of all of her different performances. And early on in the movie, you see Suzette has like one of those giant chunky video cameras. So it's like some home footage and stuff of just like who Selena was. And it fades to black and credits roll. And that is Selena. I cry every time. It's so sad. And Abraham didn't want his daughter's murder to be included in the film, but the director said, you know, it's the way to end the movie, essentially. Yeah. Uh, I I think the way that it was done where we don't see the whole like leading up, like Selena going mm, to the hotel, I think it was handled in the best way you possibly can where it explains what happens and explains um, kind of her legacy and her impact without kind of giving Yolanda any more screen time. Yeah. Yeah. I do like that she dropped that egg ring. (laughs) Yeah. Like, like... before I go. (laughs) (laughs) Poof, be gone. Done with you. Um, makes me so sad it's so sad and like you just look at just this two-hour movie and all of the things that they show that she accomplished in such a short period of time and she had so much left to to give the world and unfortunately yeah Yeah. um, I think one of the really great things about you know obviously when we love celebrities or or singers stuff like that we always think that like they must be like the greatest human beings ever or the nicest or whatever I think that she was very genuine but there are a few people that kind of transcend where you know they just have like a light about them like Mm -hmm. wherever they are whatever they do there's just a light about them um I think that's why people stand so hard for like Brittany regardless of how hard things have been and even when maybe from a mental capacity she's still struggling with some stuff that she's Mm -hmm. gone through there's still like there's always been a light about her that people gravitate to her that there's a genuineness that she's actually very caring I feel like a hundred percent that's how Selena was Mm -hmm. and Jennifer Lopez did a really great job of showcasing that. I think at times it could come off as saccharine, but I Mm -hmm. think she just was pure light and energy and she burned bright fast. And we, unfortunately, it's just sad for young, for younger kids coming up, they're hearing her music, but they like, didn't get to see her living life which is sad to me yeah oh Uh, let's see oh another thing about the screenplay because abraham didn't know how chris proposed to selena and he didn't find out until after reading the script yeah oh i didn't know that (laughs) they said that like yeah there was like I've seen different numbers. I've seen 34,000 fans for the rodeo scene and I've seen 25,000. Either way, there was a a ton of fans. Mm -hmm. And then they said in between filming, they had comedian Paul Rodriguez there to like entertain the crowd. Love in the mood a little bit. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. I Um, love that Jackie Guerrero wanted to play the part of Suzette so badly that she lied at her audition and said (laughs) she was an experienced drummer. (laughs) When in fact, she's never touched drums. Fake it till you make it. (laughs) (laughs) And then, but it was kind of cool because once she kind of came clean, the real Suzette gave her private lessons so that she could portray her in the movie. That's That's cool. Steven Spielberg was initially considered to direct the film, but he turned it down so he could make Amistad. I'm kind of glad he didn't. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And this movie is what inspired Jennifer Lopez to pursue a career in music. So also I just I love like fun facts like this. Jennifer Lopez and Jacob Vargas played the children of Edward James or almost and Constance Marie. But in the movie My Family or My Familia, 
which it is on some of the boxes and I'm not trying to be a gringa. They <laughs> play the younger versions of their parents in that movie, which is kind of cool. Oh, that is nice. really nice. The guard that at the that fair performance, the guard that tries to take the kid off the stage mm-hmm. when she has like the short hair and she reveals like the boosty. I've actually met him because he actually lives in Corpus Christi and he actually grew up being selena's neighbor that's actually his instagram name selena's neighbor oh really Um, so if you ever go into corpus he usually hangs out (laughs) i'm like this guy just hangs around the statue and talks to people but he's really sweet he's almost i almost want to call him like the ambassador for corpus christi or for her because he's very sweet he loves meeting her fans i actually when i met him was in la when i went to it was like a week after her star was on the walk of uh, yeah fame. on the walk of fame and i was taking pictures and this guy comes up to me and i'm like i don't know you what is going on he's like no i'm from corpus and i've just been here and just meeting fans and i'm like oh i'm from corpus too and so yeah he traveled to la and was there for like the whole ceremony but yeah he's this really cool guy that like he's he was in the movie and then he's just really sweet that like he'll meet the fans when they go see the statue and like I don't know he's just really awesome I can't believe like I met him in LA of all places but like he has pictures with Chris Bettis and like every now and then he posts pictures on his Instagram from like the set and all that and that's cool yeah if you ever go to the statue or like if you go to Corpus and do the whole tour, like the statue, her her museum, the her grave is so beautiful. Over the years, they've just like added more and more to it. And it's just a beautiful headstone and everything. But yeah, I'm always like, go to Corpus and do the Selena tour. And at the museum, they also, there's cute productions and you get to walk in the, the studio where she recorded. And yeah, that's really cool. Too. <laughs> that's cool. I love that. Where so didn't you guys see the statue, Jackie? Yes. We went to the beach in Corpus Mm -hmm. in July. And so on our way out, we stopped by the Selena statue. But we didn't get to do the grave or anything. We had to get back. Do you guys have any hot takes, questions or whatnot? Questions about the people in my head? Have any fun feedback or questions for our wonderful guest Stephanie or Anything that we discussed today, make sure to hit us up on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, or YouTube at No More Late Fees. And let's get into our ratings. Stephanie, we'll start with you. So for this one, I would probably say rewatching it, it would be like a five-day rental. Like it's, I'm not one that buys movies anymore. I'm just like streaming and all that, but it's definitely one where like when it's on... I'll watch it and I still enjoy it to this day. Jackie? Um, so interestingly enough, I own this movie now on <laughs> iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> so it would be, I would buy it for me. I mean, I really enjoyed it, like not having watched it in 20 plus years. I think it, it was still great. Ken slept through most of it, woke up and just cried at the end. And so he's like, <laughs> I've never seen this movie before. I'm like, well, you saw the end. He's like, well, now I need to watch the rest of it. So I'm sure I'll be <laughs> re-watching it again soon. It, it still would buy for me. I remember at one point, like every now and again, I'll just get like a feeling of wanting to rewatch it. I definitely need to buy it on DVD since I don't have my VHS anymore. Mm. Sometimes streaming makes me lazy, but I hate how it's like always moving and stuff. That's so true. there's a few movies that I just mm-hmm. love, like want to have. It just, there's so much nostalgia wrapped up in it for me. It's mm-hmm. the nostalgia of the movie itself. It's the nostalgia of Selena. And this is my favorite Jennifer Lopez performance, I believe. I would say it's probably this one, then Out of Sight. Just like pure acting chops. Mm -hmm. The rom-coms are different, but like, yeah, this is my favorite Jennifer Lopez. When I think of her, a lot of times I think of this movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. For me, this is her era. I felt like this is when Jennifer Lopez was Jennifer Lopez for me. Mm -hmm. This is before she was J-Lo. 
And she was really grinding this money train, like out of sight. These were the movies that I was like, this girl's killing it. Mm -hmm. Then, then we got the rom-coms and I was like, okay. Well, if you have opinions on your favorite Jennifer Lopez slash JLo era, hit us up at our quick drop 909601 and MLF 909601 Twat us at the Twitters or leave us a voice message on our Anchor FM account and you could be featured on a future episode. Join us next week as we celebrate the 25th anniversary of the animated classic Anastasia. I have hard opinions about this one, so please listen. Oh, I'm worried now. You should be. <laughs> okay. And as always, be kind and rewind.